Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Nailed It. I'm your host, Curtis Warden. I'm joined today by my special guest. Hey. This is Aisha. Aisha Khan. Yes, that's right. Ama Photography. Ama yes. by Aisha, yeah. Photography Ama, and cinema. Ama by Aisha. Yes. Yes. I met her because she funded my deal. Uh, you funded what, like 300 grand of my, yeah. my latest deal? That's right. And then you, you had never even seen it and you funded it. Yeah. And it was pretty fun. <laughs> we did a walkthrough. Yeah. I mean, I would have done it anyway, but it was, you know, interesting to see afterwards. Oh, yeah. After you. Well, I really think you were kind of shocked. when you. I was totally shocked. I mean, I, I've seen your portfolio now and. Uh, I like how you call it a portfolio. I call it a scrapbook. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but, so you saw my portfolio. Yeah, and total confidence in you. Uh, okay. It's just, it's something that the average person, I think even in your in your field, cannot, I, I don't think that most people could do that. So this is why I wanted you on my podcast. One, because um, all these, I tell people, Nailed It is a show about me hacking my life. Whether or not 10, 1,000, a million people ever watch this i'm bringing people on that i think are doing something cool in houston or in their personal life or with their business where they're living a lifestyle where they were just nailed it and i believe what your story that you were just giving me a glimpse of i just wanted you to pause that so that you could share in a real raw moment so that i could experience it with everybody else when they listen to it because i i've never even met you until two weeks ago yeah yeah so i think in in our real estate world i think people are going to be meeting you for the first time but i thought it was cool how you got to this place so let's start get me back to before ama photography what like give me your background Okay, so um, as far as photography goes, it's just been a passion of mine always, but I never considered it as a profession until I was in college, going to school for no reason, and also working a job that you know wasn't terrible, but it had it didn't have a future. And I was trying to think of like what to do, and then a friend of mine said, "Hey, you should do photography. Like you're good at it." And I thought, "Oh, like that's a profession. I, I did never thought about that." So. Um, I think I went home and I was like, I'm going to be a photographer. (laughs) Where'd you go to? Where'd you go to college? I went to HCC and I was just taking classes. I I didn't think of like going to, you know, something else just because I didn't know what to go to, what to do. So um, that's why I just was taking classes as HCC. And I had taken like some photography classes just for fun, but not thinking that it would turn into a profession. Okay. Yeah. So... Where, like, are you first generation here in Houston? Yes, first generation in America. Okay. Um, tell what what was your what was your family success story to get here? My dad is in oil and gas. Okay. He definitely is the reason why we're here. We we started traveling when he was a woman. I was little. Um, within Venezuela, that's where I'm from. Yeah. And then, um, you know, he just got opportunities overseas and went ahead and took it. And this was before Venezuela was like in the state in which it is. Um, and how is Venezuela today? It, For those people who may not know. Yeah, it's just an unlivable country. You cannot um, get food. It's the inflation prices. I mean, everything is just. Um, it's like a whole civil war unrest over there. It is, yeah. The people but, versus the government. The haves versus the have-nots. The haves versus the have-nots, exactly. Um, and there's just no hope, really, to have, which is really sad. I mean, there's just no no leadership that really wants to get things ahead, and it's, it's just a really sad situation over there. So a lot of people have fleed. Um, it's, I think, the biggest exodus in, in the... Uh, today's history um in venezuela so it's, it's yeah. just really sad so a lot of people have left but we left before that just because my dad had opportunities yeah so you came here uh when did you 
when did you get to Houston and what do you love most about Houston? Cause we talked a little bit about this. Oh yeah. I love Houston. Yeah. So, yeah. Why? Cause um, you, I've, you, I've stalked your page. You, you've traveled everywhere. I have. Yeah. I mean, um, so interesting fact, I became a citizen about two years ago. I want to say I'm terrible with a sense of time, but it wasn't that long ago. And, um, it was because of the fact that I have been to so many countries and I think it's awesome that people are born here and they're proud to be American and I think that's great. But it's another thing to choose a country and say, this is my country now. And um, and I think that in a sense, I didn't exactly choose the US as much as I chose Houston. Ah. Yeah. Um, and it was just because, you know, I realized going to other countries, other seeing other places, even within the nation, um, Houston just has a lot of opportunities. I just love the culture here, and it has given me a lot of opportunities, you know, the photography part, but even in other fields. I feel like this is a, a city that if you want to make it, you can. If you want to hustle, we're here, you know, and the people also, like, we still have a sense of like southern hospitality even though it's a big city so i love that i love that our i think that our city is summed up by one phrase be somebody oh yeah right yeah um that was uh, for 10 years that was right above the as i was driving that was right in front of me on my way to downtown yeah and i live so close to downtown i think you you do too and yeah. Uh, Aisha owns a warehouse that she's converted into a photography studio. And if you look at your stuff, I'm going to I'm going to give you some accolades real quick. I believe that you look at photography in the situation. The way I look at houses, you see something where no one I I'm like, how the fuck did she come up with that? That is amazing. There's the picture of your soon to be husband, your fiance. Mm hmm. And you have the picture of you in his shirt. And then you click on it and it becomes a video of you. Yeah. That is amazing <laughs> and sick. And I've never seen anything like it. It was so cool. But the way you view the world, that's the, sto the story of you that I think people, the reason why people should hire you is because you see their moment before their moment happens. You create their moment. And I've seen the way people tag you and then they, they post about their experience that you brought to their wedding. You do a lot of weddings, a lot yeah. of special moments, a lot of engagements. So I want to, I want, I want to talk all about that too. Cause I'm engaged, uh, getting ready yes, to be that's married, right, that's right. getting ready to be married. Yes. And she's, she, she's, uh, she's very easy to photograph. I'm very much requiring of filters and snapchats and stuff like that so but my personality is great but um yeah no the way you view photography um i just loved it and i feel like you have this free spirit that allows you to uh, adventure the world without being tied down in all the minutiae that i think a lot of people walk around with on a day-to-day -day basis and this show is all about hacking your life like how do i be successful so for you when was that moment that you woke up and you were like, yesterday I didn't make it today. I made it. Today is my day. Oh, man. Everybody has that day where it just like triggers and you, you they call it the overnight success. Okay. There was one day where mm -hmm. I, I, it kind of did hit me. Um, I, when I got the studio, it had a lot, I think over a year had already passed. And uh, this guy was in the studio and he was like, man, you're you're living the dream. And I thought, what? You know, he said, you got this a studio, you know, and you're renting it out. You have your side gig. Like, I've always wanted a studio and I still don't have one. And I thought, oh, yeah, I that is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you're so humble about it. You are. You come from a place of, I think that you, I think you've traveled through so many places in your background. Uh, with Venezuela and seeing all that allows you a perspective of the world where you greet everybody exactly where they're at. There's no judgment with you. No, no, for you're, sure. You're an old soul, even though you're not old. You're, you strike me as someone who has a lot of seasoning, 
a lot of life experience. And I have two daughters, which is the reason why I'm doing this podcast today. Is when I met you, I wanted to do a podcast so my daughter would watch it. Yeah. So my fiance would watch it. My fiance is trapped and entangled into the, she's in that world of, um, I work a job. I've got to work the job, but I really don't want to be at the job. Yeah. And she's dabbling. You know, she's already got one real estate note. We've, we've refinanced her house. So now she's got her house and now we're looking for more real estate. And she knows that she's like moments away from her overnight success. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's just all about that. Can I go out and grab it and take it? Why? What made you just be where you were like, I don't fucking care. I'm just going to go. I'm going to go do it. I'm Like you have no fear. Yeah. And I don't see it in your eyes ever. I think that's life though. Like if in any approach, any your approach for anything in life, it has to be, you just got to do it, you know? And it's not necessarily that there isn't fear. It's just that, uh, well, I mean, I remember a friend posted that like when you're scared to make a move or do something, what do you do? And I was like, honestly, I just do it. I try not to think about it because I know that the more I think about it, the more reasons I'm going to come up with to not do it. And then it's just going to take a back seat. But maybe it's, you know, sometimes you just got to be dumb about it. Just do it. <laughs> I say that all the time. My first my first business partner, we went and got like 16 properties real quick. Then we, I came up with, uh, I found a, uh, a subdivision that the builder had went bankrupt. So the bank was just liquidating all these properties. I was like, well, let's go grab it. And they said, what's it like working with Curtis? And he said, he's dumb enough not to know any better. And I'm smart enough to know better. But I go with him because I know he'll figure it out. Yeah, and you just, you do, you just figure it out. And I think when I first started photography, that was kind of the um, approach that I had. I did quit my job without having clientele or, you know, any type of uh, network that could give me clients uh, or work. And um, it was super difficult. I mean, there were times where I was, you know, crying by myself, like, oh my God, what did I just do? But... I figured it out, you know, and, and the thought of like going back to a job. Oh and, God, that yeah, scares stuff. Exactly. Scares exactly. Me. I was like, I can't do that. I need to just make it. I need to figure this out. So give me an idea of like, what did you do when you started? Like what type of projects did you take and And like, what do you say no to now? And you only take. Yeah, so of course you just you take everything and anything that anybody gives you, right? Even if somebody says, "Hey, you're out of my budget," I'm like, "What's your budget? I will do it." Right. <laughs> um, but now um, I'm just very more like exclusive. You know, I, I still do a little bit of like family portraits and things like that, but it's more for clients that ha- I've worked with. So I like to stay close to them. Um, but if somebody messages me and they're like, hey, do my birthday party, I'm probably going to say no. Um, if you want to do family portraits, I'm probably going to say no. But I do have an associate that I can send work to, and I and I review all of her work. So um, I don't like saying no, but I just try to find a way to, to still say yes. So how do you come up with all these cool moments? Like um, you had this one, like where did you get this idea? Where the couple is in the middle of the smoke and you had them holding the smoke and it's just like smoke's going all the way around them. It looked in, they were in some warehouse. Yeah, yeah. They were in warehouse. Um, I think it's 4825 Warehouse. It's a studio. Really cool place. Um, I asked for permission to use smoke bombs and the couple actually wanted to do photos at the park for their engagement shoot. <laughs> no joke. That's what they wanted to do. And I was like, man they're cool people like you know i think cool people gotta do cool stuff okay so talk about that because i have to i have to like nail my customers with like this is the dumbest fucking idea right right you know well i did tell them afterwards we can go to the park we never did but because once they saw it yeah we once we took the picture they were like it's kind of epic like how can you beat this at the park you know you can't so 
um, that ended up not happening. But I did tell them, like, we can still maybe go to the park after. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I did tell them exactly that. Look, you guys are really cool people. I think we got to do something awesome. She's a, um, a yo- yogi. I don't know what you call yeah, it. Yeah, a yogi. A yogi and uh, also a dancer. He is also a really cool person, also dances. And I was like, we got to do something that reflects that, something that looks cool with dance moves. And um, I don't know at what point the smoke bomb came in, but you're a creative. Then, and then black, black. Oh yeah, the smoke bomb. I thought it was, it was just timeless. Yeah, yeah. No, all your stuff is so cool. There's the, I like the. Uh, you you had a phrase as you were on the rock in Isla Mujeres, and you posted it, and you said something about. Um, you were kind of giving a, a brief synopsis of life, right? And you said some, it was like a phrase that you were quoting from somebody and they said something about, um, my energy is my responsibility or my reaction to the world is my, is my responsibility. Right. Yeah. You know, people are going to tell you things they are going to treat you like whatever. And it's up to you to know how am I going to react? What move am I going to make? to turn my life around or to turn this situation around that is fully on you. Yeah. That it's crazy. So Houston is your first love. Where would you what's the coolest place that you've traveled to? And where would you go? Where where what's on your bucket list next? Bucket list is Japan. It was supposed to happen for my birthday in okay. 2020. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and it was scheduled for February, which is right when the pandemic started. So it's still on my bucket list. But why Japan? Um, you know, I just I like ramen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard from a lot of people that there it feels like being in the future. I think like they really like their gadgets and electronics and stuff like that. I want to know what that's like. I feel like you want to go photograph something there. I most definitely want to photograph everything there. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I the neon lights over there is still a thing and um it's just really cool looking. Yeah. 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 Time lapse. Time lapses for sure. Yeah. yeah. That would be epic. Yes. So, yeah, you um yeah, is the you have another crazy cool. I I hope people go on to your Facebook page or Instagram where what's the best way to connect with you I think Instagram um uh, yeah we were just talking a little bit about how you know Instagram is more into reels and reels don't go into Facebook so um I've just been posting more on Instagram so where do like where does social media and your success where do those two things collide or do they not they do um I remember actually, like I said, when I first started, I didn't have a network or anything. And that's actually, it was many years ago and Facebook pages was not a thing. And so Facebook was trying to launch that and they ended up picking certain pages and gifting them money to run ads. And they gave me about $300 total to run ads. And so I think, you know, for, I needed that at the time because like I said, I didn't have a network. So I'd used social media from the beginning to try to connect with people, to try to make sure that people saw my work. So I was like making sure to tag all my clients, posting on, on their page whenever I came up with the photo. And then as I've told you, you know, I'm not I'm personally not a fan of social media. I don't like the effect that it has um, on people, sometimes the negative effects that it has. But for from a business standpoint, it's really important. It's like free. It's like having a salesperson working for you 24 hours a day. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, my fiance hates. She hates social media. Yeah. She doesn't understand why so many girls are taking pictures of themselves looking for attention. Yeah. She doesn't like attention seeking. Mm -hmm. She thinks some of the things I do is attention seeking and it, it doesn't. It doesn't, she says, it doesn't make me see you in a, in a fond light. Oh. Right? It's very good. Very, very. And TikTok is even more so. Yes. That's the sad My part. kids are addicted to TikTok. How, do you use TikTok? 
I use it very rarely. Like it's okay. not. I and I actually sometimes use it for the editing because they're editing. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's actually easier to edit than it is through the reels on Instagram. So if you want to edit on your phone real quick, I mean I have some apps, but sometimes I'll create something on TikTok and just post it on Instagram. Can you can you really shoot very well with a Apple or a Samsung? Oh. <laughs> I want to know. Um, I mean, be honest. Yeah, which which have, camera is better, the Apple or the Samsung? I feel like I can't really say because I haven't used a Samsung recently okay. that you know compares to the latest iPhone. But the latest iPhones are sick. I and I, you know, what's funny is that the first time that my fiance was here in the United States, I told him you can tag along to a wedding if you want to, and he ended up shooting a wedding mostly with an iPhone. And at the time, I think it was like the iPhone 6. Um, so this was years ago. If you can imagine, like if you use these phones properly, you can get really awesome stuff. And the latest iPhones are just sick. Like the quality is amazing. Okay, so what is the stuff that you're shooting now? You're, you're getting into cinema too, like uh, making short movies, stuff like that for people. What, what's that? So our cinema is right now mostly focused on weddings, Mm -hmm. but we are, I'm working with my fiance on a new LLC that is going to be Golly Productions and that will be focused on commercial work. Mm. And And like what type of commercial work are you going to do? Like short little movies for, for businesses to like a commercial or. Well, for example, um, uh, this one was under my name and because it was a couple years ago, we did it with Orion Media, and it was actually for Sages. Orion um, Media. That's her name. Yeah. Wait, in o- Orion is like a like a like a movie production company. Oh no no no! Okay. It's a small right. company. Okay, small company. Um, but it was for Sages, and which is a medical lab that checks, um, like your skin for sample, like take samples of your skin, and they check for different cancers and stuff like that anyway they hired us to do kind of like the whole process of what they do but in a time span of two minutes which uh is a very fast-paced video because as you can imagine taking a a sample of your skin and going through all of the steps um is not a short thing no it's not yeah so we did a super cool video and ended up winning an award um and that's what we want to do is kind of like what you see your usual commercial videos, but like really edgy, more stylistic, um, particularly in the medical field. You just don't see that. Yeah. That's why I was wanting you to do videos of the uh, of the house project. Uh, yeah. Because that thing's like a haunted house. It is. I mean, I think people are just it's it's impressive. It's going to be so impressive once you finish it. So give people an idea of that. Like, um, so how did it come about? I know how it came about, but like you're talking about the, your network being what connects you right to business opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I met Brian several years ago. He Brian was, Burr. Brian Burr. Yes. Um, he wasn't doing this at the time, but he was very much into investments and figuring out how to move your wealth and how to make wealth. Um, I remember that being a huge passion of his at the time. And anyway, we've stayed in touch. Um, I came across the opportunity of doing the EIDL loan that um, through my LLC. Yeah. Yeah. And, and contacted him about it. And I, I, I first I was only um, approved for 85 grand. And I thought this is not, I, you know, I really wanted to get approved for more and buy a a second studio. That's what I had envisioned. And then they told me, Oh, you're only approved for 85 grand. So I talked to Brian. I was like, Hey, what can I do with 85 grand? I have no idea. I can't buy the studio, but I can probably do something right. Yeah. And so, uh, he said, yeah, you can invest it. So I I told him, okay, I'm in. I'm going to do it. You know, again, we go in at first. (laughs) You'll figure it out kind of thing. So I was was like, okay, I'm going to start the process, finish this and get get the money, start the loan. Then um, towards the end, that's when they told me you actually approved for 350. And I thought, well, I already said that I'm going to do 
the loan thing. So just going to go for it. Yeah, you did. And then uh, what was the experience like when you walked in? To the house. Yes. Yeah. So this for every anyone listening, this is after I gave my yeah, 300. This is already after <laughs> she's put in 300 G's. Yeah, it's out of my bank account. I don't have it anymore. I We have the key. We don't even have keys to the property. All we have is the property with a open door. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, like, I don't think you need a key. You just walk in. Um, but, yeah, so we park and... Um, there's trees everywhere. There's trees everywhere. There's areas with, like, the awning has no roof. I think it's still supposed to be a garage area. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not really there. It's just a frame. And, yeah, doors are not opening. They're not closing. Yeah. Um, we get in. There's like a path, a worn out path yeah. along the way where you could tell like that was the only area. I took a picture of the kitchen. Okay. Ooh. And the, the kitchen is, is just interesting. It's interesting to see that somebody lived there. Up until like two or three days before. Yeah. It's not a livable space. Yeah. It's, no one should live there. I don't know what kind of animals were in the kitchen because it was just... <laughs> I mean, it was just tough. It looked like you just threw maybe like coffee all over the place. You just, <laughs> you know, it's, it's dripping all over. Like, yeah. I mean, it's dried now. Yeah. But it, clearly many things dripped all over the place. Yes. There was a lot going on in that yeah. kitchen. Yes. Yeah. So um, did Brian tell you much about what's transpired in the last week? No, no. So a husband and wife came by. And we're in the process of selling it to them. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Already. See, they trust you. They they see your vision. At 850 grand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't think that that's what you were aiming for. Is, no, is, they, it, it's a, is it above? Well, it's going to be above because they. I was only going to go for 2,400 and they want more. Mm. They want more square footage, another 600 square feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they love the corner a lot. They oh, love yeah. they love Link Road, and th that's the thing is that I, I was scared to buy this property. I think I told you that I said I wanted to not buy it. I hated it. I thought oh, this is going to be bad. But then Brian kept going. Well, if you want to, if you want to walk away, just walk away. It's no big deal. <laughs> just wanna, do you, you know, walk away. You know. And I was like, oh, I don't walk away from shit. This is a good challenge. And then uh, my buddy Evan. Uh, who you know Evan's are also partner in it Evan was like um, when else are we going to be able to buy land in the middle of the heights this close to downtown mm -hmm. for $33 a square foot and yeah. there there was the rub mm -hmm. that was the friction at that moment that's when I was like you can't it, the worst case scenario is I'm going to sell this for land Mm, yeah. That was the worst. And it, and you'd still be in the, the best case scenario. I bought it so deep. I'm going to walk away and I'll have paid everyone back and I'll just make a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's the worst case scenario. There's no there's no scenario for me where this thing doesn't make money. Right. It's just a. it's either going to be a time thief or it's going to be a joy creator. And I'm excited to see how the floors are going to look after because you said you're actually going to keep I was going to keep the floors they want me to replace it oh so yeah so <laughs> I'm going to actually yeah we're, we're going to take all the floors up uh -huh. but we'll save them yeah yeah we'll re I'll reuse them in, I'll put them in one of the new houses how old are those floors almost 60 70 years old that was a 1940s house wow 70 years old yeah, and it's just good floors. I mean, though they took a beating. Yeah, nasty so beating. For anyone out there that is uh, not in this position, not creating the you, you have the lifestyle you want, right? Yeah, I'm very happy. Okay, with my lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I, how do you define success? Comfort. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. You know, I like um, to be able to say, hey, I need to, I want to take off. I want to go somewhere. I want to relax. I want to check out this restaurant um, without worrying about the price, the price. Yeah. Or how much will be left on my bank account? Um, so, yeah, just comfort. How long did I, it take to get to that point 
from when you started your journey to where you are today? Um, many years. I think partly too because when I first started, things did take off pretty quickly and I didn't really give myself time to rest. So you have all this um, success, money coming in. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, when you have all this good stuff coming in, but you need to work on it, you don't really have time to stop and think, hey, you're doing well. Maybe like relax for a little bit. Right. Chill out, go on vacation um, without working. That's not something that I considered until maybe about four years ago when I hit, uh, I got divorced. So I hit a moment in my life where I didn't really have a choice. And um, then I started prioritizing a little differently. What's, what do you think the biggest mistake people make right now is? In business? Hmm. In life. In life. Anywhere that's keeping them back from the life that they want. What it, what do you see? What what are your friends or people that you have spent time with? What do you see them? What, if you I could think, give them advice, what it, would it be? Yeah, I think most of the time that I see that happening is just kind of like people getting adjusted to their current situation. And maybe they complain about it, but they don't do anything. Uh, maybe they're scared. Uh, maybe they're just already used to it. And so I just, I think most people just kind of get, get used to it. Yeah. Uh, comfort is both, um, it's, it's like a destination and it's also a curse because it keeps you from growing. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. I, I like my lifestyle to be comfortable in that moment, but I don't. I'm very scared of living a life that's boring. Oh yeah. I look at my Facebook from people of my my you know, I went to high school with or I went to college with and you see like these two people and you're like I remember they were so good looking, right? <laughs> and I or or there was people where I'm like I wanted to sleep with that chick. <laughs> there was <laughs> no way I would do that. I wouldn't even touch her today. You know, it's just, it's different. Yeah. People's life, they get comfortable in comfort brings complacency. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting in my field for photography is that it's constantly changing, whether it be styles, uh, trends or equipment. And um, I kind of like that about it because you know people say oh like uh, i love your style and i'm just like well you know and they'll point at some, something and i'm just like yeah that was like yeah two 10 years, years ago. ago like i'm not even two years ago i'm just like i'm not into that right now like we we had uh, a discussion yesterday on on facebook and the guy said okay guys new house uh green brown uh, greens or, or grays or browns which one and you just see these people and like, there's so many people going gray, 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 gray. And I'm going, okay, gray is outdated. Is it? Yeah. I didn't know Gray that. is out. So I put gray is outdated. Don't do gray. And, it, and then is... I get a comment back from a, a girl. What do you mean gray is outdated? Well, what's in then? Genius. You know, so I'm like off white, oh. either a cream or a gray. Huh. And perfectly would be the blend of a creamy gray. Mm -hmm. it, it, okay, so your artistry that you do, if you look at your backgrounds and your filter that you're filtering the photo through, most of your stuff is is uh, creamy gray. It's like oh. that old, it's like bringing in that old picture, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, It's just yeah. a little off. It's not crisp. It's not bright. It's right. just that's that's what the the tones are right now going into houses. Nice. It's a little smoky. It's a little brown. It's a little white. Mm -hmm. It's not everything. It, the the walls are kind of like this, a little off white. Yeah, I mean, I can't really tell if this wall is gray or if this wall yeah. is white, but I know that it's not stark white. 
And so that's the that's the deal. So anyway, you just tell people stuff, and it's amazing uh, the type of like when I'm not afraid to tell people my opinion. If you ask for it, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Like you asked. Yeah. Gray or brown? No, this is dumb. Like, and that's why uh, I like. Yeah, I knew that this would be a good conversation because I really feel like you have a way of you just do it softer. You don't you do it with as many words. I bet you you just said, let's try this building versus the park. And they were like, <laughs> OK, all right, we'll just go with you. Whatever you say. <laughs> but to bring it back to houses and colors, you were talking and now I realize you were talking about like indoor walls, but your style particularly has a lot of blacks on the outdoors. And that's not is that a trend or is just like that's, particular to you? Hmm. I th- I feel like it's a trend that Joanna Gaines started, mm. right? It was the black and white. Mm-hmm. And now it's like you'll see something that someone does and then you want to put your own spin on it, right? You don't want your all your photos to look like everybody else's. Right. You're trying to get everyone to make their photos look like yours. Right. That's what I do with houses. Hmm. I mean, I love the houses. And, but, and I saw that kind of like... Uh, a consistency in style. Yes. Okay. And so how you feel about my houses is how I feel, how I feel about your photography. Yeah, for sure. It brings me to a moment when I'm looking at your artwork and I'm looking at these two people and I'm going, you capture their moment in a way that makes them want to stay together forever. They, yeah. Right. And I hope that they do. Yeah. I, <laughs> I hope that they do too. And when I build a house, I build a house, especially this house. It's in 1940s. It was unloved. A lot of people in this world have been through something where it tore them apart and no one wanted to take a chance on them. No one wanted them. They were beaten. They were trashed. They were used. There were shit all inside of their heart. And it took someone like me to go in and make them beautiful again and put energy into them. And that's what I do because I know that I have a responsibility for the people that are going to be moving into that house. And if all I did was focus on the money and if all you did was focus on your sitting fee, you wouldn't be the person you are today. No, of course. Because you told me at the beginning, you told everybody, I do things for people that I do one time and then I stay close to them so I can be a part of their journey. I can keep photographing magical moments in their life. And for me, I build you a house. I want to build you your swimming pool. I want to build you your bar. I want to be, I want to be there with you through when you grew outgrow this house and you need to go to the next one. Let's go do that again. That's me. That's where I want to go. So it's like from a creative to a creative's perspective. And I think that uh, you live a lifestyle and my lifestyle is I want to help as many people as possible have their dream home. And I just think it takes people like you who are willing to go, wow, that's really ugly. I'm going to go ahead and invest with you because I believe in you. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that there are people out there that they won't roll the dice. They'll get out of bed tomorrow. They'll go to their shitty job. They'll stay in their shitty ass relationship and they'll still eat shitty food. And then they'll complain every day about why life sucks. Sitting in a garage, watching football, talking about how horrible the Texans are. Sometimes you just got to clean house. Yeah. And start all over. Anyway, that was my rant. Yeah, that's a, that's a good rant. <laughs> you have anything you want to leave people with? Um, no, I mean, I hope it's, it's motivational. Like I, I've hustled and, uh, we've talked about Houston and all the opportunities here. I think. Hustle Houston. Yeah. And, and you just kind of ended it with that. You know, you just got to fix a oh, clean house, whatever. Clean yeah. house. Yeah. Clean just house. do something. And I think that that should be wherever you're at in life, you know, you've got opportunities. Yeah. And you're in Houston. Yes. It, they say New York, if you can't make it, trust me in New York. There's a lot of people that can't make it in New York. Yeah. I know a lot of people that came back from New York. Yeah. (laughs) It's not New York. If you can't make it there, you can't make it anywhere. New York 
crushed the hopes and dreams of many an entrepreneur by shutting off their entire city. Uh, yeah. Houston provided an opportunity to continue work even through the pandemic. Yeah. I was very grateful. My fiance was in Italy, by the way, also shut down. And I was so grateful for the ability to go on a walk and take pictures, street photography, just because I needed to to do something to get myself out of bed. It was so depressing to just be in, in our quarantine. Right. And how amazing was it to photograph during the middle of the day a desolate ghost town of downtown Houston? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well... I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you investing into me and also breathing some energy into this podcast. I think you're an amazing soul. Well, thank you for having me. You are welcome. Guys, that's it. That's the latest edition of the Nailed It podcast. Thank you to the Total Wealth Academy for helping provide this amazing studio. And there's a list of uh, some activities coming up. So go to Total Wealth Academy. There's a free class coming up on the 12th at 630. So if you want to learn more about real estate investing, come on up to the Total Wealth Academy off of I-10 in Kirkwood, and we will see you on the next episode.